Hello and welcome to ERPWebTutor.com. This is uh, Ardeep and uh, in the previous video we just completed the setup for Core HRMS. So this is going to be a very short video showing you how we can create our first employee in Oracle. Or, now we already have created employees for this business group but we'll just show you that uh, we are going to create an employee in Oracle and uh, this is just to, you know, this, just to get a feel of the whole setup that you have done and how we are using it. So uh, in this video, this is going to be a very short one. We'll just create an employee uh, for our uh, uh, for the for the demo corporation that we just created, and uh, we are going to create uh, for creating an employee in Oracle. We are in our demo US Super HRMS Manager responsibility. We need to go to People, Enter and Maintain. And for the purpose of creating uh, employee in, for creating all the initial employees in Oracle, for this implementation, we would uh, we will create as an effective date of first Jan 2012. So if we want to do that, we will have to if change our effective date in Oracle. And right now it is saying that the effective date is first Jan 1951. I want to change it. Yes. And I will select the first uh, or the effective date to be uh, first Jan 2012, and this find screen opens. We don't we don't need to find anything. We are just creating a new one. Now uh, we will try to uh, input as many fields as possible, so just to give you a feel of all the fields available. So uh, last name is Kyle John. And the title is say Mr. Uh, the prefix, suffix, middle name, you can have whatever uh, information you have, you can enter here. Uh, the gender is male. Uh, the action is create employment. And the moment you say create employment, you're going to see that the, these two fields getting enabled. And uh, let's see what are the values we have here right now. We only have a single person type, which is employee. And we also going to enter the social security number. Uh, remember in the, in the in the profile setup, we said that the social security number format validation is a warning or an error. So we had error. So if you do not enter the right format, it's going to error. So let's see what happens. Let's just put a wrong format here. And let's see what happens. When we press tab, we can see that the social security number is invalid and it's throwing me an error. So we have to enter the right social security format in order to proceed. So the profile setup that we did for checking the social security format is working. So let's put the right format. So this is the right social security format for US and we put a birth date. Uh, you can put you can put the country of birth let's say United States uh, and uh, there are other two these are all free text fields the status is this is the marital status is married nationality if it uh, you know if it has anything relevant you know if we, so we can just uh, say, or we can just leave it blank. Register disabled. Uh, we say no. We go to the next tab, employment, ethnic origin. And we make it white. We can white, not Hispanic or Latino. Ethnicity disclosed is going to be yes, because we are entering that. And the veteran status is, let's say, not a veteran. Uh, the I-9 status, we, we really don't need to enter some all these. Uh, th this is a new hire, it's saying included a new hire report. And uh, what else we have? We have next, next tab is office details. So let's put some email address, say John Kyle 
at democorp.com. And then we have something called the mail too. So whether this is the, the home or office, so it's office email. Then applicant, we don't need. Further name, if you want to have a preferred name, it's say Johnny, let's say. You know, there's no previous last name. There's something called the other. You know, you can just go through all these tabs and Oracle has a ton of fields available for you. And benefits, date first hired. Let's change it to say first gen 91. Of course, so even though your conversion is happening on let's say the first gen of 2012 effective, you can still capture when he was first hired in, in I mean in the company. So this is the date first hired, this is the effective date, and then again today's date is of course uh it's the 18th of March so you have so many dates so this is the effective date this is the date first hired this is just for in, for information purpose these are for Oracle data storage purpose so pretty much done here on this screen so let's save it yeah so the record is saved and you can see that the employee number seven has been generated by the system so if you remember when we had the business group set up we said that the employee number generation is going to be automatic so that's why it has um, given this employee number as seven to this employee automatically generated. So it's pretty much created all the information on the employee screen. So the next thing we need to do is if we are trying to add a salary to an employee, we need to make sure that uh, for the US business group, we need to make sure that the person has a primary address defined. So for creating the primary address, we need to go to this address screen and just create an address so we just create some random address here and the city is Los Angeles and we need to put a valid zip code and that's pretty much it and you see this primary checkbox is checked because you need to have one primary address defined in the system to assign a payroll. So let's save it. And once we save this, we need to create all the assignment details of this employee. Now the organization. So if you see here that when we created the employee record, uh, it automatically created an assignment record. So it created with just the basic information the organization has been defaulted to the business group the location has been defaulted to the organization's location so it's, it's just just created a basic assignment so what you need to do is you need to update the assignment so for updating the assignment so let's see what happens when we start updating it so the organization is going to be uh, it's it's going to be the demo corporation U.S. corporate because we are trying to create this as a, as as a CFO of this company, Mr. John Kyle. So the uh, the organization is going to be corporate, and the moment we do this, it's giving us this option of an update or a correction. So an update is if you see here, keeping history of existing information. So it end dates the previous record and creates a new one so that's an update and correction is it corrects the existing information now in this case the record started in oracle on the first jan of 2012 so we are again on the first jan of 2012 so whatever we choose here doesn't really matter it's going to force a correction in the system but just for understanding what this is this is the this is an option in Oracle uh, HRMS that you can actually <clears throat> decide to update a record or correct a record. So in this case, we are correcting uh, the assignment. So we will choose correction. And uh, it took us to the next field, which is the people group. In the people group, we had three segments. We had the union. So it's going to be the executive guild. The overtime eligible is going to be no. Sick pay eligible again is going to be, let's say, you can choose whatever. We will keep no for the time being. And the job. 
is uh, going to be the CFL. Uh, the position we are not using, grade we are not using, and payroll we already have only defined one payroll, which is the Demo Corp US monthly, so that's the only one. And the assignment category is going to be full time, full time regular. And uh, if you want, you can enter something for the employee category, which is uh, white collar or whatever you want. We'll just leave a blank at the time for the time. Uh, the salary basis. Remember, we created salary basis, the monthly salary. That's what. That's the only salary basis we have defined for this business group. And then we have supervisor. Uh, we have created some Steve Jones as the CEO of the company. So we will search for Steve Jones and we will assign Steve Jones as the supervisor of, uh, of John Kyle. So we will search for Steve Jones. Or just search for Jones. Yeah. So Steve Jones is the first employee created in this system. So he has an employee number of one. And Steve Jones is going to be the supervisor of John Kyle. And we go to the next tab. This is the probation and notice period information. If and since these are all old employees, we will really not use this because uh, this employee, of course, we are saying that is an employee of the company since 1991. If you hire a new new employee, you can uh, use these fields, the probation period, the notice period information in here. Now, the standard conditions, again, this is coming from the business group uh, that is being defaulted. Again, uh, if you need to check the document on where we created the business group, please go ahead and check and find out uh, where this is getting defaulted from. There is something called the workday information, and this is the setup that we did when we created the business group. So we go to the next tab, the statutory information. Here we need to enter the GRE. Uh, we only have one GRE, so we'll, we have to enter that. And uh, there are other tabs in here, the special ceiling, project information, grade ladder. Uh, we are not using those at the moment. So we have pretty much done uh, making changes on all the salary. We have the DFF. We can, of course, use this. So legacy employee numbers, a business card title. We will have the chief financial officer. And say the previous company, we can say, well, let's uh, say, you know, Jacobs Engineering or something like that. Some, some I just made up. So Jacobs Engineering, Let's say OK, and we save it. So our assignment record is saved. The last piece of information that we will need to enter here is the salary information. We click on salary. And right now, there's no salary defined. We will click on add new salary. Uh, the new salary is eff effective from uh, let's keep everything to be the 1st Jan 2012 and the current salary let's with the CFO let's give like 35,000 a month that's a ton of money and the reason for change like we said we created this uh, lookup type uh, lookup value called conversion for the lookup type proposal reason that I mentioned that when I was showing you so conversion and uh, you can just leave the rest of it blank. Uh, the salary, this is the effective two day. You can leave it blank. So uh, when you create or when you uh, create a new salary, it's going to automatically end date the previous one. So just leave the two day to be blank and we'll click apply. So that's that pretty much it. So when we created this, when we entered the salary, the salary basis it took the demo corp monthly salary it had uh, the basis per year is 12 so it automatically multiplied this thing by 12 and gave us the annualized salary and uh, and the salary has been approved so pretty much uh, done with creating the salary so we can close this and that's about it so we successfully created an employee in Oracle 
uh, using all the setups that we did as a part of this video. So I hope that will be pretty much uh, pretty satisfying for people who are setting uh, or learning Oracle HRMS functional for the first time. You know, you set everything up, you create your first employee, that, that marks the success of your setup. So I, re I really hope uh, uh, this will give you some confidence and you, you enjoyed the whole thing. Uh, the next piece would be to understand the conversions of uh, or the different data conversions in Oracle HRMS. So that would be a separate tutorial, but the core HRMS setup videos ends here. And this has been a long journey. It took, took me a while to prepare everything. Uh, I know that once you watch a video, you're always anxious to watch the next one. Sometimes you didn't have it. But finally, we came to an end and uh, we finally finished all the videos for Core HRMS. If you have any questions on any of these topics, any of these videos, please do post us a comment on uh, our website at www.erpwebtutor.com. Until then, I hope you you enjoy learn, learning Oracle Apps and appreciate your time. Thanks.